Streamers is a homebrew game for the Nintendo Entertainment System from Faux Game Company, released in 2012. The game is based on a Flash game by Arthur Mr. Padunkian Lee and has been adapted to play on actual NES hardware. The NES is one system which has become extremely popular for homebrew and third-party development, and this game is certainly a good example of that. Time to find out why. The story behind the game is quite unusual. The game is based on this game of the same name, featured on the infamous Action 52 multi-game cartridge for the NES. Mr. Padunkian, a keen homebrew game developer, created his version as part of a competition called Action 52 Owns to create new games based on those from the original multicart. As you can see here, it was a flash game that was certainly inspired by the NES hardware, but not strictly adherent to its limitations. Still, someone obviously saw some potential here. The mysterious Faux Game Company then came along and ported the Flash game to the actual NES hardware, and that's what you see here. It looks almost the same, aside from a few graphical tweaks here and there. The sound has changed more to match the NES sound chip, and the music tracks take inspiration from Action 52, especially the final level, which sounds very reminiscent of the theme from Cheetah Man. So what about the game itself? The nonsensical plot, written in intentionally broken English, sees you take the role of Joe, a member of Super Strength Emergency Squad Zeta, or Streamers. You have infiltrated the headquarters of Master Y and set a bomb to detonate the building. However, your team can't reach you to escape, so you need to make your way to the roof of the building via the use of a device eerily similar to the one used in Bionic Commando. In fact, the overall style is something of a parody of that game, most obvious in the various dialogue scenes. It's quite a short game, but the relatively unique platform mechanic does make for a really fun experience. The game utilises the more modern arrangement of infinite lives with checkpoints, rather than employing lives and continues as in the past. If you're familiar with games like Super Meat Boy, then you'll feel right at home here. You still have a counter for your lives, but it's more for your own benefit. You can complete the story mode in under 10 minutes, but be prepared to die quite a lot before you make it. There's more to the game than the aforementioned story mode. There's Easy Mode, which is basically the same as Story Mode, but with many obstacles removed. Once you've played Story Mode, you may find this a little too easy. There's Time Attack Mode, where the dialogue boxes have been removed and an on-screen clock is added, although it should be mentioned that the other modes still keep track of your time. Then there's Superb Joe Mode, which sees you guide a pallet-swapped Joe through an extra difficult final stage, without Master Y racing against you. Finally, and most interestingly, there's Streamers Mode, which changes the gameplay entirely. As you play as a scientist escaping the wrath of Master Y, you reverse your gravity, like in the game VVVVVV. This makes the already familiar levels take on a whole new dimension, and greatly expands the replayability. In fact, this mode is arguably more popular among speedrunners than the regular mode. There are quite a few retro-styled games out there, but it's very encouraging to see one of them actually made into a real NES game. Some of you might not appreciate this kind of game, but if you like a challenge, then this is a great one to try. And besides, it's free!